Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Allie. If you are new, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button and joining my YouTube family. More tutorials and looks are definitely coming, but I wanted to do a palette ranking video this week and had to do my Anastasia Beverly Hills. So I have them all stacked up right here and I don't really want, you guys kind of already see the first one and I don't really want to give the rest away, but I'm going to be ranking them from my least favorite to my favorite, just like I did my Jeffree Star Cosmetics palettes. I will link that video up above if you guys wanna check it out. Also, before jumping into this, if you're interested in today's look, this is a part of my gemstone series, and I'm sure as you guys can tell, this is my ruby look. That blog should already be up by the time this video goes up, so I will have it linked down below. Um, if it's not already there, it will be coming either later this night or the next day, so be on the lookout for it. You can also follow me on Instagram at AllieBrienne underscore MUA um, to keep up with me there, and I always post when blogs and stuff like that go up too. Thank you for all the love and support on my gemstone series. I love getting back into blog looks, and your guys' feedback has been incredible, so thank you so much. All right, but for what you're here for, palette ranking video, I love all of my Anastasia palettes so much. I'm not including my Norvina palettes in this at all. Um, I do have the original, like regular, like you guys see soft glam already. So these are just gonna be like this size palettes, um, not the Norvina. I do have like the purple, the little purple Norvina like this one um, in here, but yeah. Just these Anastasia, I'm going to be talking about this formula, these palettes, and that is it. But I still have eight of them. I think these are all of them. I'm going to be really mad at myself if I go through my palettes later and find another one. But I think these are the only ones that I have from ABH. So since it was already pretty much a dead giveaway, my least favorite palette from Anastasia is that I have is the Soft Glam. I actually just recently did a look with this palette too. I believe it was a Makeup Monday look because I do my Makeup Mondays on my Instagram, but I had so much fun with that look and I, guys, I'm honestly shocked that this is my least favorite palette because I had so much fun creating that look. But if I'm being realistic, these shades are just not really mm, me shades. Like these aren't shades that I typically go for. I you guys up a little bit. So yeah, these shades, I just typically don't go for in palettes. I feel like I have plenty. I don't think I'll need any more bronze, gold, any type of neutral shades like that again in my collection because I have so many of them and I just don't reach for them a whole lot. So that's my main reason why this is my last palette. The formula is still amazing. I still love it. I had so much fun playing with this palette the other day and it still is a very loved palette. I'm so glad that I got the Soft Glam, but... Those shades are just not loved as much by me. I like color. <laughs> so the next one is Riviera, which is weird since I just said I love color, and this one is like... But um, I've probably used Soft Glam more than I've used this one even. I feel like I like this one a little bit more because there is more to go off of when it comes to like colorful looks. But I don't know, I was obsessed with this palette when I first seen it when it launched and then I jumped on there and got it. I knew I had to have it. I think it's a beautiful summertime palette. I love the packaging. I love that they went a little different with it instead of the traditional velvet. Um, but it just really has not gotten a lot of love. I feel like it's a really pretty summertime palette. I'm glad that I have it, but... I don't know. I feel like if I'm going to reach for an Anastasia palette or out of all of them, I definitely have given my other ones a lot more love than what I have to this one in Soft Glam is what I feel like. It's still really pretty. I'm kind of hoping that I can get another look with this before summertime is over, but I'm already like feeling fall. So I, I'm one of those like, in my book, when September hits, it's fall time. So don't at me, but I like to give each season their three months. So like for me, 
fall is September, October, November. So yeah. <laughs> My next palette is the Modern Renaissance. And if this, if I was doing this video like two years ago, this would probably be like one of my favorites because when I first got this palette, I used it all the time. Mine's actually in pretty good shape for how old it is, but I use these shadows all the time. A little bit goes such a long ways. I always see people use these palettes and they take their brush and they're like really digging in. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, I feel like I would make such a big mess if I did that, but these are just the mattes. They literally like take my blender brush and then I mean I just like and look how much is already there. Like the kickback on all of these is pretty intense, but you can kind of dust off a little bit. You're good to go and it blends so far. They are stunning. The color story on this one I do love. Um, it definitely is more of a fall time palette and I love Anastasia's fall palette themes way more than any other ones. Um, I feel like Soft Glam is like a really pretty like sultry summer palette and I feel like Riviera is more of like the colorful summertime palette where I feel like this is like the perfect colorful but like berry, mauve, that type of palette for the fall time. And it's like a really good like romance palette too. So I do think it's beautiful in that way. And I mean, this is just such a gem. It's, it's like an OG, you know, I didn't have the like Mario palette and stuff like that from them. This was my very first Anastasia palette, but she literally was like that bee that took over and really, I feel like, made these palettes what they are. But so many good ones have come since that one that I have five more now that I love more than even Modern Renaissance. And my taste has definitely changed over the years because if you would have asked me last year, this one would have been my favorite, <laughs> the Norvina. And usually, when I talk about Anastasia's palettes, I automatically say, yeah, I think the Norvina one's my favorite. But laying all, I literally laid these all out across my bed, opened, and just stared at them. And that's how I picked today. And just, I wanted to go off my current self, how I'm currently feeling and vibing with the color stories. And after looking at the other ones that I still have, I was like, I'm not vibing that much with this and I don't know if it's because I'm going into like fall mode or what. I feel like this is a beautiful springtime palette and I love the springtime but fall is still like that's that's yeah fall is my girl. So this palette I do really like still. I love how unique the matte undertones are. That always gets me with eyeshadow palettes but I also love the concept of having the top row all metallics, the bottom row all mattes. If you guys can kind of see that, that it goes this way, but the top row is all metallics, the bottom row is all mattes. And I feel like they're very like cohesive with each other. They look really good together. They just complement each other. And I like that you can still do a range of looks with this. Even though you have a lot of pink and purple going on, you also have like some more grungy shades that I feel like really pull it together for me personally because although I love color, I also love grunge shades so much. So this definitely is a palette I still absolutely love. I just wouldn't say it's no longer like my top favorite. I'm really shocked that this next one came before the Norvina one, but for so many reasons, this one could be next. But my main reason is, out of all my Anastasia palettes, this one's actually gotten a lot of love for me, and you guys are probably going to be like, you just contradicted everything that you just said, but it is the Soul Tree. I think this one has gotten so much love for me, it's neutrals, I know, but I think this one has gotten so much love for me because out of every palette in my collection, this is my favorite cool tone palette. And I don't wear cool tones a lot. I probably wear cool tones less than I wear warm neutrals. But the difference with Soft Glam 
as that one is so warm and I have so many palettes in my collection that are warm so I may not always reach for soft glam but if I'm wanting to go full cool tone which is rare but if I want to take it there I automatically like one of the first palettes I think of is this one and I always go for it but what I also love about this palette is of course the pop of coral but the metallic shades are so unique to me in this one and Again, the undertone, like Norvina and Anastasia, they just kill it with the color stories and the actual shade of each one, like the thought that's been put into each shade, I feel like is incredible with their palette range. And the Cyborg shade always gets me. It's like full Tin Man vibes. Um, I love the pearl. It's a beautiful highlight shade. I also go for um, Rose Quartz, which is such a beautiful, like if you want a, ro a true rose gold shade, that is it right there. Cinder, I use a lot too if I reach for this palette. If I'm wanting to not go too cool tone, I feel like this palette makes it cool tone, but I feel like that shade actually kind of like shifts it a little bit to make it more neutral to where... I'm a little bit more comfortable like with the warm tone than just cool tone, if that makes any sense. What I also love about this palette is the deep brown and the black. They blend out so beautifully to make any outer corner sultry and just so easy. Like if you like smoky eyes, but you really want it to be easy, this is such a good palette for that. It just blends so nicely and one of the quickest palettes to blend out, I swear. Um, but also, good, very, very good um, transition shades for me is Birch and Twig. Birch is a little bit more warm. Again, if you kind of want to balance out that cool tone, warm tone, and Twig is a little bit more of your cool guy, where I feel like I can go full cool tone with that one. But yeah, obviously, I love this palette. It's such a neutral palette and I know a lot of people weren't a fan of it but it kills me it's so good talking about blending this one is a little bit different this is my third so I have two more that I like a little bit more than this one but this one almost won it for me this is the OG subculture so there is like the blending issues here and there um it works for me I've always said that I love so subculture I've always been in love with this palette I feel like some of the shades just take a lot longer to blend than usual which does suck because the formula is so amazing and all of her other ones blend super quick for me but I can get past it because of these shades these shades are incredible to me. Definitely right up my alley right now with wanting to go into fall makeup, but these shades just call out to me anyways. I love them. I'm all about the fall shades. I love that there is a deep purple. I love purple shades. You guys know that. I love that there's a coral tone because I wear a lot of those. The greens that I have been obsessed with for the past year, but there's also like these cool um, unique shades as well, like a mustard shade like a orange a navy you know that type of ordeal going on you also have the highlight shade you also have this really super unique metallic shade called electric um and then an in-between gold bronze metallic so there's only three metallics in this but i kid you not they are so beautiful like the mattes are like the game changer with this palette because they're so unique and again the undertones everything guys I could drone on about the undertones forever I know but they're like my favorite thing about these palettes but the metallics even though there's only three they're all super super beautiful I do feel like when I reach for this palette I do really like to go full matte with looks a lot it makes it a little hard since this one takes a little bit longer to blend but the out like the outcome of the look so worth it all right, two more palettes to go. So this, these last two, I had a really hard time with, and you guys might already know which one's my favorite. Actually, I did with all three of these. So between Subculture and Prism, I had a really hard time figuring out which one would go first. The other one I've mentioned a few times and I've been obsessed with it. It is definitely my current favorite, so that's why it got first place. But Besides that one, I knew it was going to be Subculture or Prism, and it took me for 
ever to figure out which one was going to come in third place and which one's going to come in second place. And the blending issues, like the how long it takes to blend them out and that type of bordel is kind of what solved it in the end for me. But Prism is definitely... It's limited edition. I don't even think you can get it anymore, but it is a palette I am so glad that I have. I... I don't know. I feel like a lot of people slept on this one and I feel like some people still don't like it, but it has always been a palette that I have absolutely adored. Like I just feel like the shades are so beautiful and they're so unique together. And yes, it is the undertones. I feel like the shade Saturn is such a unique orange, um, like a, almost like an orange that has like a coral mix in. It's really, really unique to me. Um, although I feel like some of the other shades, like even the brown or this peach, have been seen in other palettes, I feel like they still really help pull this palette together. But I love the uniqueness of the metallics in this palette, the different purples, um, the deeper metallics that I feel like just make any dark smoky eye so much fun. But also how adventurous they got with this palette with throne which is a really deep metallic but also this bright sphere shade is just stunning the overall look of this I, I keep going with it and I'm like this is just so stunning I definitely could have done without another black but I actually had this palette before I had my soft glam or my um sultry so at the time, I was happy to have the black. Um, I also love, love, love this shade, and I've used this shade so many times with this palette. It is the perfect little mauve shade called Lure. But my favorite top Anastasia Beverly Hills palette is the Carly Bible. I, when, when this thing launched, I was like, I don't need it. I really don't. Alyssa Edwards, um, Jackie Ina, some different people like that collabed with them. And I was like, well, I guess since Norvina is coming out with their own palettes, all of these palettes are going to be collabs now. And I honestly was kind of bummed about it because I love how these other ones that I just showed you guys are. Um, and although I think Jackie's palette was really pretty, like I was super close to getting Jackie's and still probably will eventually get it maybe. <laughs> I have a problem. I that's that's why I'm currently on a no buy. And then the Carly Bible one came out and I was like, no, I don't need it. And I passed on it for a while until a Black Friday sale actually. I'm like, hey, it's marked down. I'll just try it out and see what I think. And you would know this would become my favorite Anastasia Beverly Hill palette. I love these shades so much. Again, the undertone is so unique in them. They're so beautiful. And I know that, you know, Carly Bible had a big hand in picking out these shades and the names and, you know, that type of Wardell, the layout. And it might be crazy to you that this is my favorite, but this palette I have used so much since I've gotten it. And every single look I've created with it has become one of my favorite looks that I've ever done. I swear, every single time I use it, I'm like, oh my god, this might be my favorite look I've ever done. And I just love it. I love the red in this. It's so unique. I love the metallics too. Like this one has like little glitter specks in it as well. Um, they have different shifts to them too. And I don't know, there's something about the texture of some of these that seems more buttery than their normal formula. If you have this palette, do you see the difference in them too? Like they already are like incredibly good, but I feel like these are a little bit more buttery and less crumbly than some of their other ones is how I kind of feel with it. But I don't know, just the whole color story, everything with this, I just love this palette so much and it just has become a favorite. I think it may, them and subculture are like my babies. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably like the ones that, you you know, if it was like get rid of like almost all of them type of ordeal, I feel like I would have a harder time getting rid of my prism and subculture for so many different reasons, but I just feel like those are like more of my tones that I really like. But currently, and while picking these out, I definitely picked this one as my favorite because it this year it has just been like that palette that I absolutely love. But out of those three, like the, they're definitely like my tops. Like they are that good. 
What I love about the Carly Bible palette too, I wanted to mention this real quick because I think I've already mentioned it before, but what I love about this one is that this one's definitely could be springtime. I actually have it in my winter palettes because I love these tones for holiday season. Needing a really pretty glam moment for Thanksgiving or Christmas or something like that, I feel like these tones... You know, you can go warm and like peachy if you wanted to. You could play it just very neutral. What I love about this too is that these fun metallic shades up here I think are so perfect for like a New Year's look. And that's why this ultimately got placed in my winter palette because palettes because I was like, that palette is just perfect for festivities and holiday looks and that type of ordeal, but also for New Year's and like fun party looks too. But I hope you guys liked my palette ranking video. Um, if you guys do enjoy these, let me know and I'll do some more. I'm kind of thinking about doing my ColourPop ones soon. There's just a lot of those, so I'm like, it's going to be kind of a hard one because I know these videos tend to get kind of long. But let me know if you guys want to see it and then I'll try to go through and see what all brands I have a lot of palettes of. I could also do it with my Kylie Cosmetics palettes. But yeah, let me know. Any other content requests you guys have, drop them down below as well. I'm always up to new ideas. You guys are definitely going to be seeing more palette tutorials or like actual makeup tutorial style videos from me because that's what I'm kind of currently into. But every once in a while, I do want to switch it up to have just like a talking video where I can just chill. I can just sit down and talk to you guys about makeup and not really have to be like focusing in on something as much as just like chilling and talking with you guys. Also, let me know down below how you guys, what palettes do you have from Anastasia Beverly Hills and how would you rank them? If you have done this video, let me know too and I would like to check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in my next video.